Hello and welcome, welcome to tutorial number 13 and in this tutorial we're going to be covering plotting. So, uh, you know, we, we mentioned before that uh, the workspace of AutoCAD is an endless uh, space that has no limits and no matter how much you zoom in or out there's always more space to draw but then when I want to print this out on a piece of paper of course the piece of paper has limited space and therefore chances are I won't be able to control the scale of the drawing or where the drawing is located or how big or small the drawing is and most importantly what is included in that drawing and this is really important for us to understand and control because um, whatever we present in documents and in paper format is what can be or in of course by email as pdf format is what counts when the project is being um, either submitted for permits or being implemented on uh, on the ground or being edited later on so as a result it's really important that we can master and we can control our uh, our file whenever we want to print it out and also remember we said that no matter what lines or what colors you give your layers um, these can be changed with the plotting as black and white so we need to also edit the properties of the layers but not from the file itself or from the layers where we um, used to draw on and but only ask the printer or ask AutoCAD to plot a certain color as a different color when being printed. To do that, I'm gonna take you to the lower left corner of my workspace where it says model, layout, layout, layout one, layout two, and then of course I have the possibility of adding more and more um, layouts. So I'm gonna go ahead and press on layout one, and you can see how I'm turned into a limited piece of paper. I'm no longer in an endless space, so if I zoom in and out, um, there is a chance that um, the space is gonna, I'm gonna run out of space, and therefore, um, um, I'm back into the reality, so to speak. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drag your attention to this square that I have here that I did not draw. So if I let me zoom out, I'm sorry, I'm facing problems with my scroll for some reason. So if I go back to the model space, you can see that this rectangle doesn't actually exist. Now, that's a good thing because this is where my drawing is limited. So you can see how this triangle right here is slightly outside the draw area so it doesn't show so allow me to zoom in a little bit and I'll show you how we control that so if I zoom in a little bit more you can see that my drawing is cut off so those are the boundaries where my drawing is going to take place now I'm going to zoom out again once my mouse responds Okay, and anything I do right here is only affecting. So if I zoom in and out, it's only affecting the piece of paper. Now to do that, you will have to make sure that you double click inside this square so that you can edit the location. You can pan and zoom in and out, um, whatever uh, documents or whatever, however you want your drawing to be in the document. Now to get out of this and you want to zoom in and out through the space or through the paper, all you have to do is double click outside of this square or outside of this rectangle possibly. Once you double click outside, you can see how the borders are now fine and they're not bold lines. So that means whatever you do right now is only going to get, take place on the entire paper view and not on the drawing itself. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this layout one to make it ground floor. Obviously, this is the ground floor plan. So I'm going to rename layout one as ground floor plan one. And if I had more pages into the document, I can add as many layouts as I want. So each layout should represent a single page. So if I had a document of 100 pages, I should have 100 layouts introduced into the document. So the first, in order to be able to tell which layout represents which drawing, all you have to do is right click on the tab right here, single short right click on your mouse, and rename your tab. So you choose rename right here. I'm going to call this GF plan because this is the ground floor plan. So GF plan. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to hit the enter button on my keyboard. And now I'm done editing the layout. As I mentioned before, you can add as many layouts as you want, and you can give them whatever names you want, as long as they're not duplicated. Now, my next problem is that, how do I know what size of paper this is? Because I didn't specify the size of paper. So to specify the paper layout and how the plotting is gonna happen, I'm gonna go back to the layout, which is GF plan, to the tab, and I'm gonna right click here again, 
and I'm going to go to page setup manager. So now I'm setting up my page. I'm setting up my space. I'm now it's asking me to choose which layout I want to I edit. I'm going to choose the GF plan, which is this layout. And I'm going to choose modify. Now it takes me to this plot or print page. Of course, right here, I can choose the printer that I want. And in the paper size, if I drop if i press on the drop down menu i can choose the paper size that i want the default is probably letter i'm gonna go ahead and choose a2 for instance or maybe a4 because your assignment um, if you're if you're supposed to submit an a4 then you choose a4 if you're supposed to submit on an a2 then you choose a2 and so on i'm gonna go ahead and choose a4 so that's 210 by 297 millimeters so that's a landscape uh, layout once i press here it takes a while to process for some reason and I think uh, my application, okay, there. So now it changed the paper size to A4. The next thing to that I don't really like to touch is what is to print, what do you want to plot? You can either choose the display, so whatever I see right here is gonna be plotted, or the layout, which is the layout itself, regardless how much I'm zoomed in or out, or I can specify a window or extents. I don't like to change that because I'm working on the layout for a reason. So I'm gonna keep this as layout, which is the default value. And then I'm going to go to the plot scale. Now, sometimes this is in millimeters, sometimes it's in inches. Make sure that you change it so that it matches the drawing that you have. And it says scale one millimeter equals 0 0.92, whatever number it has. I'm going to change that from the drop down menu up there where it says custom. I'm going to make it one to one because I don't want it to rescale the page itself. All I want is for AutoCAD to rescale the drawing and not the page. And that's really important. So always make sure that your settings are properly set and that you're ready to start print printing. Now I'm going to move to the plot style table, which is, remember when we said that you can change the color of your layer to be printed out in a different color or the properties of a certain color that was chosen in your AutoCAD file to be plotted in certain properties. So I'm going to go ahead and change it from the plot style. In some practices, in most practices, actually, they already have a plot style introduced into the computer. All you have to do is choose it. Right now, we don't have that. So we're going to start a new one. And you can either start from scratch or you can edit an existing one. That's up to you. Then once you choose your option, I'm going to go to next. The first thing it asks is what is the name of your plot style? So I'm going to call this test because I already have one that's named test. I'm going to call it test underscore one. And then once I'm done, Oh, sorry, I'm going to call it test one, no underscores. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to hit the browse button. Oh, sorry, I'm going to, I should have the next. Oh, let me choose my document. Oh, I'm going to start from scratch. And then I'm going to start the next one. Now, of course, you can edit an existing one, but because I don't have one already installed in my computer, I'm just going to introduce a new one. I'm going to say test underscore one. Once I'm done naming it, I'm going to hit the next button. Now, right here, I can change the plot style table editor. I can open it and start changing the properties of the lines. Now, the trick here is that AutoCAD does not um, choose the layer. So you don't get to choose the walls layer to be printed in a certain thing, but rather you choose the color. So if you have two layers that have identical colors, you need to change that if, you if they have different properties. Now, as you can see right here, color one, we have multiple colors that represent different shades of red. And then if you go down the, the menu or the list that you have, it goes up to 255 colors. And that's really a lot of colors to edit. So to avoid too much work, that could be a waste of time. All you have to do is remember what color codes you've used in your layers on AutoCAD and just edit those. And then later on, if you choose to, if you choose to change these colors, you need to remember to go back to the plot style and change them. So right now, I'm going to choose, for instance, color. What that I have here, which is color 59. So I'm going to scroll down and find color 59. And that is this color. And I'm going to go to the properties. Now, obviously, this color is different. It has more to it. Could be 590 something or whatever code it has. Well, 500 doesn't exist, but it could be a different uh, number that what I have here. You need to remember what colors you chose and then uh, move forward. So I'm going to edit for now color number 59. And then I'm going to go to the properties. You can change the color of the plotted number. So 
in what I see in the AutoCAD document or in the drawing is 59, but what I want it to be plotted, I want it to be plotted as black. And that is why I'm going to choose black. And then you can change the properties that you want. You can change the line type, the land, uh, the plot style, anything you want it from right here, even the line weight, anything you want from these options. And then you move on to the next color and so on. Once you change these colors, once you're sure that you've chosen your colors, you just click on save and close right now it asks me to finish off if you want to change some of these um, uh, options please go ahead and do that right now i'm not going to change anything i'm just going to hit the finish button now once i do that i can go to the plot options change the default settings as i find appropriate right now i'm going to keep them as is and the drawing orientation is right now it's in landscape i can make it portrait or landscape as i find appropriate now the, the dimensions I chose are 210 by 297, which means it's in um, portraits. And so I'm going to choose landscape to make it uh, a landscape uh, orientation. Once I'm done, I'm going to click on OK. And notice how my page size has changed. However, once I close this window, you can see that this my drawing is very small and it's right at the bottom. To edit that, I can easily just pick this rectangle. Just make sure that you're not inside this rectangle. So you just pick it as you pick any other object and you can stretch it as you would stretch any object on in your drawing and place it, say, I want it to be this big. Now I have edited the borders of the drawing, but the drawing itself is still small. So to fix that, I'm just going to double click inside the square and notice how if I um, click on escape notice how these borders are now fine once I double click inside the square the borders become thick or bold so that means any changes I make were, are going to take place to the drawing that is inside here so if I'm going to zoom in I'm going to zoom into this drawing if I pan then I'm panning the drawing within these borders so I'm going to be zooming in until I can see my drawing clearly and remember that we set the scale to one point to one to one to, to plot it as one to one so it's not going to change the paper size but then the drawing size since i'm zooming in and out i am editing the drawing size so to make sure that i draw that i plot this drawing in a regular or in a proper plot i need to make sure that i am editing the draw area or the workspace which means i am i have double clicked inside this rectangle so what's active is what's inside the rectangle and then you move there and you have these numbers. If these numbers don't exist for you in your view, that means you are not inside the square. So let me double click outside it and you can see how these numbers have disappeared. I'm going to double click inside this square again right here and you can see how the numbers appeared again. Now this is the plot style, uh, the plot scale, sorry. So I'm going to choose that and say I'm going to go for 1 to 100 and see how it looks. And now it has zoomed in so that my drawing is at a scale of 1 to 100 in an A4 paper. So if I pan, and I need to make sure here that I don't zoom in and out, and that's really important because if I do, you can see how the scale is now no longer 1 to 1, 1 to 100, but 0 0.0159, etc. So I'm going to change that back to 1 to 100, which is this one. And then I'm going to pan carefully without moving, without scrolling up and down until I centralize my drawing right in the middle. It's possible that you will need to choose if your drawing is a bit uh, is a single room, for instance, or if your drawing is smaller, then it's possible that you'll have to go for smaller scales to so say 1 to 20 or 1 to 10 or 1 to 1. If your drawing is much bigger or an urban scale, your chances are you're going to have to go for the opposite direction, which is 2 to 1 instead of 1 to 2 or 4 to 1 or 100 to 1. If you have any questions about scale and how we set the scale, or how we understand or how we read the scale, please feel free to ask me. Write it down and I'll be happy to answer that. So keep on changing your scale until you find the proper scale for your drawing. Right now, 1 to 100 seems pretty much okay, even though my section line is on the outside. But then again, the section is not properly drawn. The section line is not properly drawn. So I'm just going to keep this away. Okay. Once I'm done, again, be careful not to scroll in and out. Just double click outside of the square to stop editing the drawing itself. Once you double click outside, the borders are now fine. And so whatever you do, if you scroll in and out, you're zooming in and out of the paper, of the entire paper and not of the drawing. So right now, what you can do is 
set up your title block. So I'm going to draw a rectangle right here. I'm going to go to the outside corner, place it right here, and then draw another rectangle. Make sure that you're using the proper layer. Right now I'm using the doors layer, which is not a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and draw another rectangle here, but you need to make sure that your drawings are aligned because you want a proper layout. You don't want things that are off uh, a grid or off the alignment. So I'm going to just quickly draw it right now. You need Again, remember that you need to have uh, references in different points. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another rectangle here at text right here and start typing my name. Um, my practices name or my course number or my university number and all the information that I need to have in the title block. Now, if you have multiple layouts, it might be a really good idea to have attributes and blocks as the title block. So all you have to do is insert the block, fill in your attributes and variables, which are the, maybe the drawing title, and then uh, you have it ready and set to go. I hope this helps. I'm going to upload... Um, a layout of the title block and how we want the title block to look for this particular assignment. So please keep an eye on the instructor's teaching material that are related to, um, uh, sorry, on to uh, not the instructor's teaching material, but rather to um, the, com the instructor's assessments so that you can have a look at the layout and what kind of information we require in the title block. Again, if you have any questions, please write them down and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you.